Uh, my name is Bill Quigley from Loyola. I just thank everybody for coming. I particularly thank Human Rights First for uh, helping us uh, put the light of truth on uh, a very, very appalling part of the United States uh, criminal law system. And uh, uh, 27 years ago, I got a call from the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights, from Arthur Helton, who uh, said that, they, that, that he wanted somebody to help him file suit against uh, uh, the government to try to stop them from building the prison in Oakdale. Um, and we tried that in district court, and we tried that in the Court of Appeals, and we lost. And uh, 25 years later, I was at Oakdale for the riots of the uh, Cuban uh, individuals who were there who were being told that they were being repatriated uh, to that place. And I did other litigation regarding access of uh, paralegals and the like. But I think that this really, uh, <coughs> thank Human Rights First, is clearly a very, very high quality group of people that came today. We had a lot of different people from a lot of different uh, perspectives. Um, and I'm excited that it's being uh, videotaped so that the people who couldn't get here for parts of it have access to that. Uh, you know, many people have said, if you want to find out what justice is, you what? You look to the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. you look into the prisons, the other part of it is to look at who the country treats as non-persons. Mm -hmm. And clearly this is a population of people that are non-persons in our justice system. That they don't have the rights that other people have. They don't. Uh, I love the judge's definition of the roller's docket. I mean, you know, the, the, the idea that the only part of justice is just to help, help move people out. Um, and that's a pretty sad reflection on all of us and, and what we uh, tolerate in our, in our country and in our system. I want to thank you for telling the truth. I want to thank you for bringing the experts in. Uh, I, you know, the, uh, I, it's totally a systemic institutional challenge that we've, we've uh, addressed. We have lots of people have volunteered and people have put their whole lives into this work. Uh, thank you for sharing some of those stories. Those stories are very important to uh, those of us who uh, needed to be brushed up on these uh, injustices. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bill, um, for those, those kind words and the sobering story about Oakdale 27 years ago and Arthur Helton, who actually founded our refugee protection program at um, Human Rights First, formerly Lawyers Committee for Human Rights. So it's wonderful to hear that sobering. Um, however, I, I am energized. This has been a fantastic day. Um, and I'm really, really blown away by kind of the remarkable level of work and, and amazingness in general of advocates down here in Louisiana. It's a real honor to bring you all together, to take you, you know, for several hours of your day away from the important work that you're doing. Um, thank you very much for coming together to join us in this conversation. I also want to thank, in particular, um, at Loyola, Hiroko Kusuda, who's been a fantastic partner um, in putting together this event and pulled also on board key, uh, key stakeholders in the conversation. So we very much appreciate that, as well as the support of Dean Lopez, Bill Quigley, um, and outside of Loyola, Ken Mayo and, and John Wool again, were fantastic help in putting this together. Um, the immigration detention system remains a mess. I think that's pretty clear, despite the steps forward from ICE and DHS over the past three years, they really have committed resources and staff time to try to bring a system that was far, far below par to something closer to a baseline acceptable. Um, and that takes a lot of work, but it still doesn't mean that individuals who are detained by ICE on a day-to-day -day basis see a change. Um, and I think we all need to keep in mind that, that that is the measure of whether there has been change. I do think there's cause for hope. Uh, for the most part, we do know what needs to be done. I think that's clear after bringing together fantastic minds for eight hours. Um, the recommendations, the things that need to change are clear. I also think um, there's been reference to potential for immigration reform a number of times through, through the course of the day, and I think, you know, I am pessimistic in certain regards, like Michael Tan, who spoke earlier today, um, but I think there is potential that we haven't seen for several years in perhaps, perhaps, 
um, moving forward not only immigration reform in terms of legalization of people who are undocumented in this country, but also perhaps folding in some elements of reform that needs to happen to the immigration detention system. Um, and finally, I really do think there's a tremendous opening and opportunity in building alliances between folks in the criminal justice system and folks who are working on the immigration detention reform. You know, we're obviously thinking about, talking about, trying to identify solutions to problems that are common to both systems. And it's important to talk to each other. We don't have to build the wheel twice. Um, we could make one big wheel, or try anyway, to, to roll forward. And, and that would also be incredibly helpful for those of us working on immigration detention because for the years and decades of work that have been done by criminal justice reform advocates, I think we're really seeing, um, seeing that momentum come to fruition, if I can mix my, my descriptive metaphors. But um, between the economic pressures that are being put on systems at the local level and the state level that, that actually create um, no choice but to reform the system and new alliances being built with conservatives like Representative Lepinto who was here earlier today um, to to make arguments for reform based on common sense effective cost savings um, solutions to problems that we that we all see so I encourage you all to continue the conversation among yourselves um, get out of our immigration detention and criminal justice silos, talk to each other, and thank you again. Please join us at the reception across the way.